Hey everyone, how's it going? Octopus here and welcome back to Ever Crisis. Uh, the wife and the kids are sleeping right now, so I just finished recording the update video and I figured I might as well get some of these videos done. Uh, this one's going to be about the high score events, trying to get a big score. If you guys need any tips, this is going to show you how I min-maxed my run with my characters and my weapons. Uh, we did this on a live stream and a lot of people in my Discord and in the live stream kind of took what they saw here and adjusted their setups to push to that next level. Always push yourself beyond, right? There's always a straight path that you're going to be able to do in this event that's going to get you a really good score, but there's like small things you can do that can really bump you up. So you guys saw my last video where I showed you go to the dragon. Uh, there was a lot of comments that were like, oh, the Reno route is better. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I said in the video that the dragon I'm going to show you guys because I want to show you what buffs to pick up. And the dragon was optional it's between dragon or reno whichever one you guys can kill if you can kill reno there's always more points there so with that in mind whatever one you kill reno will always be the better run if you can kill it fast enough compared to the dragon if you take too long in the reno fight then things start lowering in score wise but it's one of those things you just got to run it this way and then run it that way and see what helps you so let's start this off with party. Now, I know you're gonna look at my party and be like, okay, I don't have this. There's no point to watching this video. The point of this video is showing you how I did my highest run, why I chose what I chose, and how I tweaked it to give myself a better score. Obviously, you can't copy my setup. You can't have exactly what I have, the material I have, the weapons I have, but you can figure out things as you go to make your run better. So tip one, number one is farm Ifrit and farm Shiva. If you have these two maxed out on diamond dust and hellfire, that is going to be the big game changer. When I maxed these two out compared to my first run or the run I showed you before, I was able to get away with not using any cocktails. I use less tens, potions. So the less items I use, the better. And being able to one shot any enemy in there with those summons is the make or break for a lot of these big scores. So yes, the weapons help, materia help, but these maxed out, really incredible. So one tip I wanna give you is that go to your materia and you're gonna click on whatever material you're not really using. Cause if you see my materia, I have a sigil breaker of triangle, circle, circle. There's nothing here benefiting him or putting like a D brave or barrier or anything to like help. That's because I'm trying to one shot everything and get out of a battle as soon as possible. So you don't have to put everything here like a backup cura so you're, uh, other healer doesn't have a hard time. You want to get into that battle and just poof. So what you do is you know that Sephiroth is a magic attacker. My magic attack is 2,348. I need this ruin blow here so I don't trigger the behemoth's, uh, what do you call it, flare counterattack during the sigil break. I can also kill him before that and switch this for more damage, but I'll explain that as I go into there. So I'm keeping that because that's one base skill that I need. Everything else is optional here. So if I want to replace the triangle one that has a four star, I'm looking at filter off, and this works for you guys. Whatever your DPS is, physical or magical, you come in here, you organize this by magic attack, descending, and it'll show you everything that will increase magic attack up. So this is at the top because it has a magic attack of plus 14. It's got a magic percentage or attack of plus 12. And you kind of just go through all of it by clicking on it and going, okay, that doesn't increase, that doesn't increase, that doesn't increase, that doesn't increase, this doesn't increase. So you can see nothing here benefits the way of the things I already have equipped. So I went through my entire list and I looked at what gave me the most damage. And if I had two things that had like about the same amount of damage, give or take a little bit of points, but it gave me more HP, I use the one with more HP. So you do that for your main DPS, your sub DPS, and your healer the only difference for your healer is that when you come in here you want to toggle heal so you can get more healing inside your heal setup it's pretty straightforward but some people don't think about grabbing their sub weapons or the materia and just trying to boost that attack all the way up so you go in here and you go okay well what can i switch this for more heal now you see my heal went up to 1381 and then i look around to see how much there is if it gives more hp or not if it's worth the difference and i'll equip that but my Arif's built to have D, uh, sorry, not D, uh, <laughs> Mana Breach on it. I thought it was D Brave, but it has Mana Breach so I can lower the enemy's magic defense so I can one shot like the Triple Soldier and stuff like that. So this is a setup I have. I've got just Materia Booster slash for stats and also Fire if I had to help for DPS. Realistically, Aerith shouldn't be use using this, 
and she's only using this. So I can approve the setup that I have right now, but I just want to show you what I actually used. So I used Aerith with her costume from the gear voucher for more healing. She's my main healer, and she has this weapon for defense up when I'm fighting the trash mobs. Then we got Lucia with uh, the ice defense down, and then she has a gun over here that just increases her damage, so if we can do more AoE. Same thing with her Materia, it's all there just to increase. I have the Blizzard skill because she's going to be helping with DPS, and then I have two Sigil Breakers, one being the blow, and the other one just increasing her stats in general. And then you saw what Sephiroth had, everyone's stats are here for you guys to see. That's Sephiroth's stats, that's Lucia's, and that is Aerith's. Aerith's sub weapons, again, I did it to min-max her healing slash survivability. I did this for pure ice damage, because if you look at Sephiroth, his R abilities, he's got boost magic at max potential, and he's got level 4 ice at 25, and that's why I made this level 90, because it gave me that extra little point that I need to get to the next level of ice boost. Oops, wrong one. It's this one. You can see if I didn't get that extra point from level 90, I would be at 25% ice damage instead of at 40%. Now, Lucia can definitely be improved because she doesn't have any fire potency on this build. She's just got the max boost physical attack. She's got some ice potency. But if I'm going to rebuild this to get a better score, I would give her fire potency so she can do more damage with Ifrit because that's the make or break in this build. I could use less items if she was stronger with Ifrit. So that's her substats plus her stats, and these are Aerith's with her sub weapons. All right, so I'm going to be pulling this off my live stream. This is the run I did with you guys live over at Twitch. I'm going to explain everything and what's going on and why I'm doing what I'm doing. First thing is this first boss is your benchmark for your score. My benchmark you're going to see for every enemy I defeat is about 70,000, and you kind of realize what your power and how strong you are and how fast you complete something off this first guy right here. Because everything else, if you run this kind of setup where you're just trying to one-shot everything, this is how you know what damage you're going to be doing. So for my fastest run, I use Lucia's Ice Resist down. Yours might just be pa uh, doing uh, physical defense down because this guy's more susceptible towards physical damage. You can see Sephiroth does 16,000 damage. And I switched to defense by accident here, but you keep it in attack mode the entire time. You lose 1%, 3%, no matter if you're in defense or not. So after I cast two Ice Resist down, Sephiroth does his big move, and then I do my shot, and Lucia's is the last one that goes in for the biggest damage. Regardless of how I run this, if I use anything, using a cocktail is not going to give me the 3,000 score difference, because being that in a second compared to being it what I beat it is only worth a couple of hundred. So my average is about 69 to 70,000, and that's how I know that's what the rest of the run's going to be. So, same thing as the previous one, we're going to run from here all the way to the next Trash Mob 5 fight. The first thing we're taking is that 30% score, like I did before. This run's going to be different, though, than the last one you watched, because this is a perfect run for what my setup is. Yours might be doing killing the Queen first, then killing Soldiers, then killing Behemoth. But the reason I did what I did, I'm going to show you, we're going to go fast forward. The first Trash Mobs that pop over here is going to be the ones that I'm facing for Limit Break. This is very, very important here, because if I don't get my Limit Break up, then I'm basically not able to do the next part super efficient. I want to go into the three soldier fight, being able to one-shot them. So I take down that guy on the right first, because if you leave him alive, he poisons your team and you lose so much HP. So kill the guy on the right immediately. And then you're going to switch to defense mode and go back and forth between your two DPS and sub DPS and let your healer do whatever they're doing because they're not strong enough to one shot these So you're not gonna let this gauge full down See how it has a little bar and that drains if you're in defense mode I'm always switching back to defense mode when I'm using the ruins on Sephiroth and Lucia And then I'm switching straight back to attack mode to keep this max That's because when I get to the three soldiers I want to go in there have Aerith debuff all three and then immediately use Hellfire at max bar for the 50% boost. So just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's what you guys are gonna be doing here until you see my limit break is almost max. So I'm gonna fast forward to save some time. It's done, I'm running downstairs. And here's where Lucia is the only one that's gonna get a cocktail for fire damage because Hellfire is the only damage we're doing here. I wanna get to a point where I don't need to do that. So I talked about in the beginning of the video, I'm gonna put some fire potency weapons on my sub slots, increase her physical attack up and magical, so that way Hellfire can do way more. So for this run, 
The goal is whoever has a debuff for magic defense down or physical defense down, because it counts as both. But for my run, magic defense down, I'm going to switch to Aerith immediately. Aerith is going to let the bar charge up. Wait, 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 because you don't want the buff to fall off when it's close to three casts. Or sorry, two casts, you switch targets. So I got defense down, defense down. I switch the guy on the right, defense down. And now all three have defense down. Lucia is about to get her last little bit for Hellfire. If I ran the trash mobs better or use someone else, I could use double limit break here. Like if I use uh, Tifa. Tifa would use her somersault into this, giving 1.1 damage and these guys dying in one shot. So there's room for improvement. Most of my runs, these all three of them die together. If they don't, then you're just spamming this before Blizzard goes off. If Blizzard goes off, you're losing HP. And if you lose HP, you have to use a tent and you don't want to use a tent. So you're coming here and killing everything ASAP. So that's why only Lucia got the cocktail for fire damage up and nobody else got damage up because you want to use as little as possible. And there's a 67,000. The highest score I got on that was 69,200. So this run is not my perfect run, but it's a very good run. So now that we did that, I have options, right? First, you pick the magic attack B, 60% up. So all your magic attacks do more damage. And that first bonus you got in the beginning doesn't affect you anymore because now you have so much damage again. Now, the option for me is to go to Behemoth or go to the Queen. I went to Behemoth because I'm going to pick up the score bonus here, but only lose healing potential. If I went to the Queen, the Queen would lower my attack by 25%. And then I have another option of like, okay, do I kill the Behemoth of Melee to get a better score of like 3000? Or do I slow row it to get my limit break up for the Queen fight? Because I also think my limit break up for the Reno fight. So I decided to come in here and use my AOE right away before those two crabs buff their debuff, uh, buff their defense or lower my attack or do both. So right away, I brought in um, Sephiroth with Diamond Dust. I didn't use a cocktail because I didn't need to lose a 3000 points because I'm slow rolling you here. So instead of using my best aerial attack, I mean, sorry, Frostblade attack to kill him quickly, we're going to stay in here just a little bit, switching between defense and you can lower the behemoth's attack. I didn't use Tifa, who was actually using D Brave instead of my Aerith. This is an Aerith run. I'm gonna have a better run later, but you're staying here until Sephiroth has about half or whoever your diamond dust is on until they have half of their limit breaks back. Same thing with Lucia. She doesn't have her limit break because of the last two fights. We're trying to charge that back up. Him hitting us here, if we killed a little bit faster, it's fine. And I think this is where I can improve. But for now, this is the run that I did, and that's the damage I took. I think here, if I actually end up killing him quicker while only getting so much limit break, the rest of it I could go do in the trash mobs. So that's one thing you can improve on, kill him before that big body slam, right? Because killing him after and getting only maybe like a little pinch here and there limit breaks, it was not the big difference. Losing that HP, I think I ended up using a tent for this run, which again lowered my score for the initial 12,000 plus 6,000 because we're going to get 50% bonus. So we're losing 8,000 score for using a tent. So grabbing that score bonus, which doesn't have a penalty to my damage. And you can see my limit breaks aren't done yet, but they're really, really high. So I should have ended that fight faster. But this is the run that I got with the score I have right now. So I wanted to show you. Now, we got to get Lucia's and Sephiroth's limit break to max. And if I did this run differently, I would come over here, max them out, go use them, get out of that fight. But then Reno, I wouldn't be able to burst right away. So we're not going to farm these guys for a limit break. There is another run you guys can do. If you need to go in between, use these guys as a way to increase your limit break. So let's just say that we went to the queen first and we used the uh, diamond dust there. Before going to Behemoth, you would come here, get your diamond dust back up and then go to Behemoth and then use it there, and then slow roll the behemoth till you have max diamond dust back on. But because I did the run the way I did right now, we're over here just trying to kill them as soon as possible and get out. We're only going to be able to get Sephiroth's and Lucia's thing maxed here, which makes a little bit no sense because when we go fight the queen, then the queen is going to give us more because we're not going to use a limit break on her. So again, there's room from improvement. There's definitely things I can do, but this trash mob is get in, get out. And here's where I kind of decide, okay, do I use a tent? Do I not use a tent? So fast forward, uh, do I use a cocktail? And because I'm not using my summon to kill in one shot, we are going to use a tent. And I believe I ended up using a cocktail for Blizzard for Sephiroth, just because I want to get a full clear here done with the 50% uh, 
score bonus. So I'm using more items than I'm supposed to, but you might have to. When after I finish this run, I'm like, I could have saved that cocktail. I could have saved the tent. Or maybe the cocktail is the reason I didn't have to use a tent. But you're going to see my HP percentage was at like 30, 28 and all that. Uh, what I ended up doing here is killing the side mobs because last time I tried to do this, I ended up dying very, very badly. And I was like, okay, I was taking too much damage. You could try to burst down the queen, but even with my setup, bursting down the queen wasn't fast enough and I was taking too much damage from the side mobs plus the queen that I decided, okay, we're just going to do this as a normal run. And remember, our little benchmark number is 70,000, right? So you're going to see how much I get out of this. So we're using a Mana Breach because we can lower the magic defense. We're Lucia's dropping two Ice Resist down. And I'm trying to race here to get past this before it pops off. And we beat it before he does his first attack because that would have really hurt if I did it. So that's why I say Cocktail was necessary because I killed it pretty quickly before it did its first attack. But maybe I can run this again and Cocktail... Oop, it kind of went through it. Cocktail will be the only difference. But I don't think I need a tent for this entire run. So I can definitely prove my score. So right there, 67,243. That can definitely be improved. I picked the score bonus of 10%, losing the attack. And that's why the queen is last. So you can see that total there. I can rewind that really quickly for you guys. There we go. So I have physical attack minus 75, magic attack A minus 75. But my ice potency is up by 20, 10% on uh, fire. I have magic attack B that's at 60%. And then score bonus of 50. So this gives me enough strength and enough score bonus to go and fight Reno. And there's my HP difference. So you would add that 4, 7, and difference of when I use a tent. So I, I'm going to do another run where I don't use a tent. I use less cocktails. And I run this a little bit more efficient with the trash mobs. But the general idea is one shot everything you can. Get out as fast as possible. And use the side mobs for your limit break refill. So you can keep doing that back and forth. So this one's not super efficient, but this one came out really good still. So I sat here thinking to myself, okay, what do I need? I added Ice Boost to Sephiroth. I added Fire Boost to Lucia, whoever's holding Hellfire and Diamond Dust. And I come in here and do this as fast as possible. If I ran Tifa, Tifa would just lower his attack and I wouldn't have to worry about the first hits. But I'm running Aerith as a healer. So that's why, again, I use a tent during this run, just because I knew I couldn't lower his attack fast enough. So main goal here is get... Ice damage down to three tiers max. We only have mana breach, so we can only lower that once. Once I'm over here done spamming this and getting that defense down, we immediately use every single limit break for the max potency of the 1.25 bonus damage. So this is going to kill Reno really, really fast. And you can see this is why I didn't need a tent, because Reno's not going to be attacking me that much, and the side mobs are not going to be attacking me that much. So here comes Hellfire. You saw the Ice do 212. Hellfire only doing a little bit because it doesn't really hurt him. And we have to embrace for the first hit. So I'm fully healing, which I could have done with Saving Grace and increase my defense. But I went for the heal first, where Saving Grace would have really helped with that damage if I was about to die or you're about to die. So if you're using her, Aerith, use that Saving Grace if you got it. And this is where the final hit comes in. Switching between Lucia and Sephiroth, making sure they're using the bigger ability. And getting here out as soon as possible. So I end up surviving. My HP is kind of crazy because of that big AoE hit. But I think I could rerun this. Besides that, this is the run I did. I went in. Big damage. One shot at everything because Hellfire, Diamond Dust are maxed out. And my characters, I increased their physical and magical attack up as much as possible. End result got me 125 for that fight. And then the full result was this. <laughs> This guy looks super happy, doesn't have to run it again. <laughs> so that's my end result, killing everything except for the dragon, 1.896651. So almost 1.9 million just from this one quest. And then my ranking after doing this with 12th place. So I can definitely improve that score by going in and fighting the behemoth different, using the side mobs a little bit different, and every cocktail or tent I don't use, cocktails are worth 4,500 points after you add the 50% score bonus and tents are worth 12,000 but 18,000 after you add that 50%. So every tent I use was 18,000, every cocktail I use was 4,500. I'm going to rerun this over and over again until I don't have to use cocktails, until I don't have to use any tents and then try to get out of every fight as soon as possible. 
So hopefully something here helped you guys out. I know you can't copy my setup unless you do have what I have. And I know it's probably hard without those max out summons, but tweak your setup, use whatever cocktails you have to use and don't use the cocktails if you're slow rolling the enemy or the trash mobs, stay in defense mode the entire time, doing limit break uh, increase. And hopefully something there will help you increase your score. But for now, guys, thank you so much for watching. Keep on smiling and I'll smell you later.